Ian came back inside and saw Sienna pretending to sleep. He didn't do anything and just slept beside her. Sienna looked back and thought, so he never intended to touch me. The next morning, she noticed Ian kissing her neck, and she said, I, Ian. Ian, while licking his finger, said, hmm. Sienna, shy and afraid, said, hmm. Don't you have to be at work? She then thought, damn, it's the weekend. I should have, I should have fled while he was asleep last night. Ian pulled her blanket off and said, quit playing your little games. Sienna, afraid, said, no. Would you be easy on me, please? Ian grabbed Sienna's neck with his hand and said, this isn't a charity, and I have a healthy sexual desire. He got up on her and said, I'm not letting you go. You didn't think it was going to be that easy, did you? This is just the beginning. She tried to get away, but Ian smacked his hand on the bed and said, Not another move, or I'll carry you to the living room and get on with it there. Sienna calmed down after that, and he said, Hmm, good girl. Then he touched her lip gently and kissed her smoothly. Suddenly the phone rang, and he got a bit angry. Then he picked up the phone and said, Carly? What's up? Sienna looked at his eyes while he was on the call and wondered at the gentle look in his eyes. Ian on the call said, Don't be afraid. I'm coming right over. He got up and wore his shirt while Sienna took the blanket on her and hid inside it. Ian looked at her and thought, She is so naive. Then he walked out the door, telling her to wait here. She thought, It feels nice not having him around, and then slept. After a while, two maids woke her up, saying, Miss Bowman, Mr. Wolf wants you over there now. A maid swished Sienna's blanket off from her, and she was naked. Sienna said, Ah, you're sickos. A maid then told Sienna, Miss Bowman, I'd suggest you get a move on. Mr. Wolf doesn't like to be kept waiting. The maids then helped her get dressed and made her get ready. Later, a driver took her in his car, and Sienna questioned him. Where are you taking me? The driver ignored her and didn't reply. She then thought, why won't he answer me? She reached the Oasis Medical Center and looked at it from the car's window while thinking, Oasis Medical Center? I once had a bone marrow donation done here, anonymously. After that, we see her sitting in front of Ian and telling him, I'll donate my blood on one condition, she thought. So it's all for making me donate my blood specifically for somebody. I can use it as a bargaining chip. After all, I have a rare blood type. No more than five people in the city have it. Ian questioned her. We're negotiating? You're in no position to ask for anything. She replied, you helped my dad. I'll return the favor by letting you use my blood to save someone. I think it's a fair deal. Ian got close to her and put his phone to Sienna's ear and said, Listen to this recording. She heard her father in pain saying, No! No! Don't do this to me! Please don't! She got angry and said, What did you do to my dad? He lifted his phone back and choked Sienna's neck with his fingers, telling her, His wound wasn't healing properly, so I asked the doctor to clean it with saline and antiseptic. Sienna shouted while crying, but he was already all patched up. Why did you have to go and remove the dressing? And you could have used iodine instead. How could you have done something so heartless? Ian replied, Because you asked for it. Sienna, I'm the one who calls the shots. You'd better wise up. Don't test my patience again and again. He then let go of her neck and gave her a pen to sign an agreement. Sienna hesitated, and Ian gave her a warning again, saying, You want to listen to the recording again? It might help you make up your mind. Sienna snatched the pen from his hand angrily and signed the agreement. Right after that, a nurse came with her equipment and took blood from Sienna's arm. Ian suggested to the nurse, She's strong. You can draw more of her blood. After that, when they were traveling in the car, she asked, Ian... Can I go home? 
Ian replied, Go home? We haven't picked up where we left off this morning. She quietly looked away. Ian then held her cheek in his hand and asked Sienna, Cat got your tongue? She looked away again, displeased. Ian grabbed her hand, wondering, I'm not a stranger to girls playing hard to get. Sienna looked at him innocently and said, I'm not feeling so well. Ian replied, I see you're trying my patience again. No, it's the way you smell. It makes me sick. They reached back at Ian's house and Sienna started puking. Ian looked at her and thought, did she just throw up? Does she think I'm disgusting? Ian then said, way to go, Sienna. He grabbed Sienna's arm and pulled her close, saying, Get over here! Sienna tried to get away and puked on Ian's chest. Ian left her, saying, Sienna, fucking Bowman! And she fell down and then passed out. The scene shifted, and Sienna was on the bed. She opened her eyes, listening to the doctor who was telling Ian, She has low blood sugar due to malnutrition. Some food and rest will do her good. Sienna asked, How long was I asleep? Ian looked at her angrily, and she got quiet. A maid served her food and said, Now that you're awake, eat something. Sienna looked at the bowl and said, I don't like this. Ian told her to finish the soup. She held the bowl in her hand and took a sip, then started coughing. Later that night, maids were getting Sienna ready with a gorgeous red dress. After she was done, Ian said, Wonderful. It's a big night tonight. He gave Sienna a document and said, I need you to get this signed. Sienna held the document in her hand and said, I'm feeling a bit off. Can we do this another? Ian stopped her and said, I don't keep worthless people. If you can't please me, then bring in money for me, or I'll have no use for you. He then got close and kissed Sienna. Ian slipped his hand inside Sienna's dress, and she hugged him, shouting, Ian, no! Ian told her, Your job is to serve me, remember? Ian noticed a scratch on Sienna's back and asked her, What's that? Sienna told him that she once donated bone marrow. Ian slapped the documents on Sienna's chest and told her, Get Mr. Leonard to sign the deal tonight or your dad will spend the rest of his life in a wheelchair. Sienna replied, All you've ever done is threaten me. Ian said, Well, it's enough to pull your strings. After all, I'm not the one with a dying dad being taken hostage. After saying that, he turned around and left the room, while Sienna was just looking at him. After that, Sienna reached a room where music was being played. She stood outside a door and thought, There is no escape. I'm going to have to use my noodle now. She entered the room and saw some girls sitting with a man, and she said, Step out, ladies. Mr. Leonard and I need a moment alone. Leonard told all the girls to leave, and then he asked Sienna, What's your name? She replied, Sienna Bowman, and I'm a lawyer. Leonard thought, A lawyer? What the hell is Ian Wolf playing at? She then moved the contract forward and said, The contract? I've read it thoroughly. Everything's in order. Sign on the dotted line, if you please. Leonard asked, Ian Wolf put you up to this? She replied with confidence, As a lawyer, my job is to interpret laws. Mr. Wolf sent me to conclude the business. He has, of course, an agenda. Leonard thought that this woman is here on Wolf's orders. Is this a warning? She pushed the contract towards him and said, It's a pretty fair deal, Mr. Leonard. I'd sign it if I were you. Because if something were to happen, we would have to change the price. Leonard got afraid and thought about the possibilities of this as a warning. Then he gave some courage to himself and replied, Oh, about that. I do agree that it's a good deal. Sienna filled his glass with wine and said, Well then, what's holding you back? She took a sip of the wine and said, You probably don't know me, but I'm sure you've heard about the Wolf Group's lawsuit loss a while back, and guess what? I was the prosecutor. Leonard got shocked and said, 
Oh, I had no idea. Please have a seat, Miss Bowman. I've heard so much about you. She sat down and said, I'm leaving in 20 minutes, Mr. Leonard. If you refuse to sign, I could get someone else here or... Leonard stopped her there and said, Well, I don't want to take up any more of your time. I'll happily take your word for it and accept the offer. Ian watched this through a hidden camera as Leonardo signed the documents, and he said, A cock crows loudest on his own dung hill. After getting the documents signed, she went out from the room and saw Trevor Sloan standing there. She got afraid and tried to run, but Trevor grabbed her hair from behind and said, Where do you think you're going, bitch? He then slapped Sienna on her face. Leonard was looking at this and said, Mr. Sloan, don't be so rough with a lawyer. Sloan replied, Lawyer? Right. I completely forgot what you were. Sienna slapped him back and told him, I am Ian Wolfe's woman. Sienna thought, Leonard can't find out about me. If I'm exposed as Ian's plaything, these two are going to force me to eat humble pie. I'm in a bind. I have to stay strong. Sloan pointed his finger at Sienna and said, Have you lost your mind? Ian Wolfe is just fooling around with you. After saying that, Sloan thought, He's been hit by a woman for the first time. I'll surely make her pay for it. Sienna said, You seriously think Ian would let me negotiate with someone as important as Mr. Leonard if I were only a plaything? What do you think Mr. Leonard is? A nobody? Sloan thought. The Wolf Group suffered a huge loss as a result of losing that court case. Leonard is an investor Wolf's desperately trying to take on. By unmasking her, I risk ruffling Leonard's feathers. He then said to Sienna, You're nothing but a gift from Mr. Wolf to Mr. Leonard. You're not as important as you think you are. She smirked and asked, Did Ian tell you that? Or did you overhear us when we were talking in bed last night? Yesterday he fired a longtime employee because of me. Since you're unusually well informed about the stuff going on between us, do you know why he did that? After saying that, she thought, that's me putting him on the spot. I don't care if he's his right-hand man. I'm going to plant seeds of doubt and then turn them against each other. Ian saw that and thought, I underestimated her tactfulness. If Sloan knows why I fired Lena, that means there's a spy under my roof. But if he doesn't, then he's being a total jerk right now. He then told his guards to get Sloan out of there, and he looked at Leonard, saying, Mr. Leonard, it's been so long. How's everything? The guards dragged Sloan out of there, and Sienna wondered. I knew a calculating man like him would try to keep me on a tight leash. Later, Ian was sitting on his chair, thinking. She got herself out of a jam. I'm impressed. Then he asked her, You got nothing to say? She replied, I did what you asked. And you got what you wanted, didn't you? Ian told her that she had her chance. And then he started teasing her with her father's recording. She shouted at Ian, saying, You're a goddamn sociopath. Ian smiled and said, Now, I'm going to give you one more chance. Choose your next words carefully. She started crying and begged Ian to let go of her dad. Ian said, Save your tears. You're pretending to be submissive. You're nowhere near as cocky as you were back there. She replied back, I was only trying to protect myself. Would you have preferred them touching your woman? Ian then got close to her and said, You don't flatter yourself. Ian shoved Sienna back with his hand. Sienna steadied herself and thought, Is he calling me shameless? She reflected on her past. I went through tough times before landing a decent job after graduation. I wanted respect. But now I'm being treated like a doormat. Sienna then told Ian, Yes, you are right. Ian asked, You know what you did wrong? Sienna wished she could cut him into pieces. She replied, Whatever you say goes. Ian placed his thumb on Sienna's lip and told her, You stay in your lane. Am I understood? He rubbed his finger on Sienna's lip and she bit him. She thought, 
No, don't bite him. Then she started sucking his thumb. Ian looked at her and thought, isn't she full of tricks? He took his finger back and Sienna said, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to do that. She became shy and Ian started washing his hands. Sienna asked him, Ian, please go easy on my dad. I'm begging you. Ian replied, I reward the good and punish the bad. I could let you visit your dad, but he'll still be punished. She got closer to him and said, No, punish me instead. The buck stops with me. Leave my dad out of this. Ian looked at her while wiping his hands and said, One minute you're a meek lamb, and the next you're a naughty girl. Someone knocked at the door behind them and said, Mr. Wolf, the perfumer is here. Ian looked at Sienna and told her to go along, saying, I'll let you see your dad. The perfumer said, Mr. Wolf, I've mixed several scents for you. Could I interest you in testing them? He showed them a bottle of perfume and said, This has top notes of cherry and rose. Ian told her to test it, and she sniffed it with her nose, then replied, I don't know what else to say other than it smells good. I know nothing about perfumes. I'm not sure if I can be of any help. The perfumer thought, A townie! Turns out I was barking up the wrong tree. Ian asked Sienna, Does it make you sick? Sienna replied, Each of these smells good. I like them all. Ian told her to pick one and wear it. She picked a perfume from the box and said, Okay, I'll take this one. The perfumer left the room saying, I'm glad that you love it, ma'am. Thank you, Mr. Wolf. I look forward to serving you again. Ian told her to come close, and he lifted her hair from her neck, then sprayed that perfume on her neck. After that, he sniffed it and smiled while touching Sienna's ears. Sienna tried to make him stop, but he bit her ear. He then held Sienna in his arms and said, You're interesting, Sienna, but you aren't perfect. Sienna replied, Well, nobody's perfect. Sienna thought, Thank God I'm flawed, otherwise I'd be treated more harshly. Later in the hospital, Sienna visited her father. Her father got worried after seeing her and tried to get up, saying, Sienna, what are you doing here? Sienna told him not to get up. Her father suddenly noticed the smell and a kiss mark on her neck. Her father got worried and started sweating. Sienna asked him, Dad, are you holding up okay? What have they done to you? Her father replied, Mr. Wolf is paying my medical bills. They wanted to treat my own eichomycosis. I turned down the offer, not wanting them to spend more. But the doctor insisted on removing my infected nail. And he said I was resistant to local anesthetic, so... He said that with tears in his eyes. Sienna thought, Ian is a sociopath, ripping a nail from the nail bed without anesthesia. I can't imagine what Dad's been through. Sienna said, I'm sorry, Dad. Her dad told her, I owe you too much. If I had let you live with your mom and stepdad, you wouldn't have had to suffer. Sienna said, No, I would never want that. She walked out on us and went after money. You don't have to defend her. She recalled her memory with her mom and said, All I remember is mom getting angry at me and dad always trying to protect me. I studied my ass off hoping I could make my way in the world and protect defenseless people like Dad. I know the law is fair, and I'm sure I'll be able to use my knowledge to free my dad and myself. Mr. Bowman questioned her. Sienna, did Mr. Wolf do anything to you? She replied, No, I'm okay. A nurse came in saying, Miss Bowman, there's somebody asking for you. As she was walking in the hallway of the hospital, she thought, the whole floor looks fancy. Even the nurse's station looks different. Who exactly am I meeting? She went to room VIP 1308, where there was a yellow-haired girl inside who asked, You're Sienna Bowman? Sienna said, I am. And you are? She told Sienna, Please sit. Coffee or tea, help yourself. Sienna looked at the coffee. It was cold, and then she sat down saying thank you to her. The girl said, I wanted to thank you for giving me your blood. 
it saved my life. The girl then said, I have limited mobility. I had those prepared for you, but I didn't expect it'd take a while for you to get here. I'm sorry, Sienna replied. It's okay. I don't really drink X tea or coffee. They keep me awake all night. Sienna looked at the girl and thought, So, she's the girl Lan cares deeply about? The girl then said, Lan won't let me meet you. He doesn't know about this. I hope you don't mind. Sienna shook her head and replied, No, I don't. Sienna thought, Of course, she's under his protection. He's in love with her. He doesn't want us to meet, possibly because he's afraid I might hurt her. The girl said, My name is Charlie Winters. I am truly grateful for you. If you ever need my help, you can just ask. They both kept talking for some time, and then Sienna said, Thanks for treating me. I should go. Sienna got up, and Winters stopped her, saying, Wait, I have something for you. A lip balm bought from Aklana. She gave her the box and said, Some godly and chocolate, here you go. Sienna said thanks to her and went away, saying goodbye. Winters said, She's gone. Sloane was hiding behind the window. He opened it and came forward, saying, See, I told you she's more capable than those girls from before. Winters said, She's gorgeous. She isn't one of those janky women. She's something else. She slapped you and then got away with it. I like her. Sloane angrily said, So does Ian. What if he falls for her? Winters shook her head and said, I've spent the last three years trying in vain to make him love me. I don't think she can. Winters said, I saved his mother. That's why he's treating me differently. Sloane said, Have a little faith in yourself, Miss Winters. Everyone knows how much Ian cares about you. You can have anything you want. All you do is ask him. She replied to him, saying, You think I don't know you're trying to make Ian hate her so you can wrap her around your finger? Drop the act. I don't like someone like her being around Ian. I'll think about what you said. You should go. Sloane turned his head around and said, Okay, I'll go. Then he picked up the coffee mug and drank from it. After that, he said, Miss Winters, my cold coffee won't lose its flavor, but your tea tastes bitter when it gets cold. He then left the room. Miss Winters picked up the mug in her hand and loosened her finger. The cup fell down and broke. A nurse came in asking, Miss Winters, did something break? Are you all right? Winters replied, Oh, I accidentally dropped the cup. I'm sorry. The nurse replied, Oh, don't be. Let me clean that up. While thinking, a rich girl as easygoing as her is a rare breed, she started cleaning the floor speedily. The next day, Sienna went to her office. She said good morning to a girl walking by her, and the girl said, Sienna, you're back to work. Have you heard the news about the Wolf Group? They won the suburban land bidding. They're going to develop it in collaboration with Spike Bridge. They'll be making big bucks. Sienna thought, so Leonard is the owner of Spike Bridge. Why do I have a bad feeling?